Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO and this is Scary Scars Shared. In these interviews, I ask real project managers to share in around 10 minutes what they've learned from their most challenging project management experiences. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Zoe O'Toole, who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Zoe, I'd like you to start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Hello Ken and thanks very much for inviting me to take part in this. I've been working in the project world for just over 20 years. Um, I was thinking about this earlier, that means that I actually joined project management in the last century, uh, which is quite a scary thought. So how did I get into it? Well, I was working at a company called Yellow Pages, um, which you may have heard of, and um, there was a desire to change the way that the Yellow Pages worked. It was recognised that the book wasn't going to be around forever. Um, and so a bunch of people pulled from various roles, I was in sales at the time, to have a think about how we took the business forward. And um, we came up with a new proposition for the business. Um, it involved implementing SAP, which is then when I became a project manager. I spent about 10 years delivering projects. So I've delivered um, up to two, three million pounds um, in terms of total budget. Um, I've delivered projects including implementation of Salesforce, um, I've done replacement of risk platforms, I've done organisational change, um, so, so quite a varied varied pack actually. And the last 12-ish uh, working in PMO, which is my passion. So your scar then, um, have you got an example of a scar, so something that went wrong that uh, other people could learn from on one of your projects? A few years ago, um, I was engaged to work with um, a big organisation. The CIO had said, we need to come up with a better way of understanding how we manage our portfolio so we can make better decisions. So brilliant, dream job, very excited. Julie joined to find out that nobody was expecting me. And that includes the existing portfolio planning team who immediately thought that um, I was there to take over. I also soon quickly learned that um, there had been a succession of people coming in to change stuff. There'd been a, a series of CIOs coming in. They'd gone through four or five in a few years. And um, it was a pretty hostile um, environment. It was tough. So how did you how did you respond to that then? What did you do when you turned up and no one was expecting you? What I did was I thought, right, I need to understand what's going on here. I had to start by just listening, spending time with every single one of those people, having a cup of coffee with them, um, and and just listening to them and asking them what was it that wasn't working for them. But then, of course, what I needed to do was figure out what the projects were and, and how I could help to make things better for everybody. I also went to my first programme review meeting where all the leads came to it. There was no definitive list of all the projects. There was no overall view on, on how we were performing. It really seemed to be a bit of a, let's pick on the project that's caused the most pain this week and, and hit that person with a stick. And it was quite clear to me very quickly that the reason why there was low attendance and people were feeling quite negative is because the meeting wasn't useful. My challenge back really after that first four or six weeks was, well, I don't know if you are doing them on time or in fact if they're coming in to cost because nobody knows, we have no idea. So we could be doing a really good job, we just don't know. The other thing um, really excitingly was that um, they just implemented a PPM tool as well. So they were being told by a stranger that they needed to change. They had this new system forced on them um, and we had these, these bullying meetings. So that was the environment. I um, did wonder if I should run for the hills, um, <laughs> but I like a challenge. And what I had to do was um, do all that listening that I talked about and let people know that I was there absolutely not to build empires, to take anybody's jobs, because that was quite a fear. And in fact, 
Um, one of the things I learned then was that's where contract PMOs, contract consultants work, is that I didn't have any axe to grind. I was there to do a particular task, and once I'd done it, I was going to leave. And that really yeah. helped. That really helped people to, to settle their nerves a little bit. So what I needed to do, and I refer back to these conversations, was it wasn't a case of me saying, right, what we can do is this. And it wasn't even tell me what your problems are. It was tell me how you're feeling, what's going on in the world. So I really wanted to get under the skin of how people were coping. And this is where I had started to understand that they'd been through these massive amounts of change. I think um, in this organisation, that's probably where the term change fatigue came from because he was there in buckets. <laughs> <laughs> what I needed to do once I'd found out how many projects we'd got was get people to start reporting on those effectively. So my first proper deliverable was really about let's get people reporting and let's continue with that, that fortnightly meeting, but let's make it weekly and let's make it useful. The newer challenge that I was now getting was I'd asked them for all this information. So they were now giving up information to me. I was presenting it out to them and there was a fear that now I was pulling together this, 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 this greater level of detail that would just give me a bigger stick to hit them with. Right, I see. Once again, it was about overcoming that fear. What was really good was I committed to those guys if they came to the meeting with their questions. So they came in saying, this is my RAG status. This is what I need from you to be able to help me. And then I did a, I did a terrible thing to the directors. I insisted that they came to the meeting as well so that they could directly answer those questions. I think that the communication instantly got better. What we got was a whole lot of people started to attend the meeting, including the directors, and we were having some real dialogue. So we were actually solving some of those problems in the meeting. And once people felt like they were getting something from it, they were getting that feedback, then they were more willing to let me introduce more process and, and some governance and control around that. By the time I left, one of those poor, poor, portfolio lead came to me and said Zoe when you came here and you said I want you to come to a meeting every week and I want you to fill in a report and tell me all your woes I didn't like it I didn't want to be there now if I can't attend the meeting and I try my very best to I make sure that I've got someone there who can go there and can get involved so we went from don't want to turn up to actually this is a really key value adding meeting that will make a difference Reflecting on that then, um, what would you recommend to other people that they do as a result of uh, your experience to either recover from that kind of situation or even better, not to find themselves in that sort of situation in the first, in the first place? What would be your recommendations to other people? What I did on differently, and in fact I do do that now, is I make a real effort to make sure I understand what the environment is like. I do a lot more research and when I go in, I go in realising that I'm not always going to be heralded as the, the person who's going to make everything okay and take the time to really understand the environment in which you're working in. So what I do now when I go into a project, into a, into a new contract is I absolutely spend those first few weeks really understanding the underlying environment, the culture, the politics that are going on and do a lot more listening. Um, I think that it's very easy when you start a new job, whether it's a permanent one or a contract, to go in there with um, all guns blazing there to save the world. And that's not always the right thing to do. You're not always gonna win friends by doing that. So really take the time to understand the environment you're in. When you're putting in change, really understand what will make them feel like they've received from it. I think PMO are often seen as the people who are there to pull information out of you. And um, one of the flags I like to raise in um, for PMO is the reason we're there is to bring all the information together so that we can deliver better. Um, and I'm very keen that PMO is not seen as the, the people who are there going, where's your project report and not giving anything back. 
Zoe, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Zoe about how she recovered from a challenging project management experience and what she learned from it. My challenge to you is what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result? If you've joined this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or by sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening.